glory of God, we want to appreciate our number one pharmacist in Nigeria. That is our special guest of honor today, our president, Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, Pharmacist Mars is Sam Ohuambua, OFR, MON, FPSN, MPOM. All council members of PSN who are right now on this platform, the admins of the various uh, Pharmacist Affairs Group and all our back end supporters who had always been relentless in adding value to what we call Pharmacist Affairs. All resource personnel who are already on the platform, all my colleagues, pharmacists, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to be here with you all on this platform designed to add our token of contribution to the various engagements of pharmacists in improving and advancing the future of our profession pharmacy in Nigeria. Special thanks to every pharmacist and organizations who have contributed in no small measure to the various programs of pharmacist affairs since inception in 2018. Your comments, moral and financial support as cash gifts to winners of Pharmacist Affair Group Innovation Award, which has become a yearly event, hunting for innate -in innovation among pharmacists is noteworthy. For any organization to have, for any organization to have different groups pushing for advancement of their profession, it is because we have the leadership who has provided the enabling environment for everyone to contribute their own quota. And uh, I'm therefore grateful for, to our indefatigable president, the number one pharmacist in Nigeria, pharmacist Mazi Sam Ohuambua, for his leadership style and his passion that has helped many of us to do one or two things as a way because his position has actually encouraged many of us and we are keen behind him. To all the participants, I want to say a big thank you for being part of this training today, because I know this training is going to add values to every one of us and it's going to improve our personal currency as we move up our personal calling. You, are supported, you have supported the idea by trusting in our activities. I'm highly grateful for all the resource personnel who showed great enthusiasm in being part of this edition. Your internal burning passion and conviction to be part of pharmacy development is acknowledged. Your timely response to the call to teach in this edition blew my mind. And we are happy you are part of us just out to add our portion to the pharmacy asset of our time. Pharmacist Entrepreneur College is an innovation that I found necessary as we try to close the obvious gaps identified in our day-to-day -day activities as pharmacists. In fact, things we were not taught in school have become the issues we battle every day. We are therefore going to be addressing these areas through the various editions of Pharmacist Affair Group Entrepreneur College, with the hope to equip colleagues with knowledge to solve these identified areas. We have also on board pharmacy students from foreign level in the, from the Faculty of Pharmacists across Nigeria as a way to catch them young in our quest to add our values to our collective outcomes as pharmacists. This edition will run on all Sundays of this month, and another edition is planned for October 2020, which means those who may not be able to be part of this edition will also be glad to be part of the October edition. And I want to assure all of us that we have different topics we shall be discussing each time. From January 2021, we are going to a modular structure, which we are going to introduce to help drive more on various areas of leadership, finance, entrepreneurship, human resources, and management. I therefore welcome you all to this unique platform, seeking to add our contributions to pharmacy development in Nigeria. Thank you for your attention and enjoy every bit of this college and even today. I am yours sincerely, Pharmacist Abedo Ajibade, FPSN, the project lead 
Pharmacist Affairs Entrepreneur College. Welcome and have a wonderful time sitting here. Thank you. Laxgo Med. Delayed stool evacuation. Difficult stool evacuation. Bloating and abdominal pains. You have constipation. How it works. Laxgo Med acts mechanically in the intestine. Laxgo Med retains water and increases intestinal content volume, which trains the fecal bowel itself. The stool softens and its evacuation becomes easier without abdominal pains or cramps. Laxgo Med helps normalize the bowel movements through a natural mechanism without irritating the intestinal mucosa. The advantages of using Laxgo Med in the symptomatic treatment of constipation. Mechanical and safe mechanism of action. No taste, no odor, no color. It does not modify the characteristics of food or beverage. Does not develop tolerance, no addiction. Can be safely administered during pregnancy, in children and in elderly patients. It is a stool softener that makes evacuation easier and without abdominal pains. Laxgo Med. Um, good afternoon, uh, very distinguished uh, professionals. Uh, let me acknowledge um, fellows of the Pharmacy Society of Nigeria who are on this platform and fellows of the West African Postgraduate College. Uh, let me also acknowledge. Um, members of NEC and Council of the PSN and all the uh, other very distinguished pharmacists, uh, as we say, uh, ancient, uh, medieval and modern, uh, because we always <laughs> cut across all the three, <laughs> all the three categories of generations. I want to say that I'm very thankful to God on a Sunday to be part of this program which um, I believe that is inspired by God uh, and which actually falls in tandem with my own viewpoint about what we need to do about our profession. Um, one of uh, my cardinal principles, uh, objectives that I set for us to accomplish during my term as president is to bring improved and empowerment for pharmacies. And that's why I had set up a committee since last year, which I called Strategy, Innovation, Entrepreneurship and Empowerment Committee, headed by uh, Mrs. Clara Omashe. And uh, the committee has been working. And one of the things it has done is to identify all the opportunities because we spoke in that mandate to them to see the possibility of setting up a pharmacy and a, a entrepreneurial academy, to be able to help to train us, to be able to help to show us the way to build our businesses, uh, build partnerships, and be able to become uh, bigger players in the market marketplace, uh, and to open our eyes to what we need to do. Um, and what they have done is to say, uh, they are trying to uh, identify all the entrepreneurial opportunities we have uh, in, uh, in the profession already, uh, including the, the um, Netherlands Business School, uh, including Sufi Foundation, uh, and many other uh, opportunities that pharmacies themselves have created, which the profession can tap in to improve our understanding of how to start and how to grow, nurture, and get businesses uh, survive long terms and return appropriate, um, uh, uh, give appropriate return to investors. Uh, so when I when um, Ajibade spoke to me about this pharmacy affairs entrepreneurial college, I was uh, pleased because that falls in line with what we are looking at. You know, human beings must understand that any organization, any group that want to grow must continue to learn. I take, for, I take every opportunity. I've been learning um, in my, how many years? I'll be 70 soon, but I've been learning all my life. And every opportunity I find to learn, I learn. And that betters my life. That betters my ability to uh, do things and produce 
uh, output that sometimes, um, um, you know, please people and uh, sometimes I'll stand them. It is because of my unquenchable uh, desire to learn and never thinking I've learned enough. So let me congratulate Achibade and his team for this project. And I believe that God will make it uh, become a major opportunity amongst many others. I know there are things which are uh, additional Opanubi is doing. So many uh, young and not too young pharmacies are bringing opportunities for us to learn. And I, I applaud all, all of you. Um, I think that um, uh, we in pharmacy, uh, if we must tell ourselves the truth, we have not done well. We have not done well in business. Uh, if you look at the pharma industry today, who are the people controlling the industry? Who are the people? You'll agree with me, it's not pharmacists. It's not pharmacists. So we can be controlling the profession, but we're not controlling the industry. And that's perhaps because of the way we were brought, we are trained essentially as professionals. Yes, some of us had a privilege to do pharmacy management and such uh, one term, uh, one session courses in the university, you know, to give us indication as to uh, business side of our profession. But except those who have gone to do NBAs, to do masters in business administration, or those who are lucky like some of us to go through pharmaceutical companies that then trained us and opened our eyes, our understanding of how to build businesses, how to run them, and how to excel. Most of us became businessmen by accident, just because we're pharmacists. We said, okay, let's go into business, depending on the type. Some of us are in wholesale, some are in importation, some are in, um, in community practice, uh, some are in industry. Uh, many of us are just uh, uh, learning along the road. And so this is an opportunity for that adult education that we seek so that we don't have to leave our work and go to school. If we participate in seminars like this, in ac academic activities like this, on convenient hours and days of the week, we will probably achieve the same thing we will have achieved, even if we didn't get uh, paid from an institute. What is knowledge? But knowledge itself is not that important. It is the application of knowledge that is important. So it is, it is critical that what we're doing is a great thing, and I lend it my support. And I believe the entire uh, family of, of pharmacy uh, supports every good cause by anybody that will promote our well-being. Um, uh, me, I am uh, essentially an entrepreneur myself. Um, in my life, I've been, I've been involved in founding no less than 30 companies. Some of them are dead. A couple of them are thriving and paying for those that died. Uh, but the critical thing is that I have what they call the entrepreneurial paradigm. I am a man who believes that anywhere I am, I'm looking for opportunities to do one or three things. Either I'm looking for an opportunity to solve a problem, or I'm looking for an opportunity to fill a need, or I'm looking for opportunity to create value. These three things are what determines, that's what drives entrepreneurship. Problem solving, um, value creation, and need filling. The world has an indeterminate number of needs. The world has an encompassing or number, numberable number of uh, problems. And yet, people say they don't find something to do. We, we, ha we have not solved one tenth, in fact, one millionth of the world's problem. Each problem solved creates an opportunity for business. Each value created creates an opportunity for business. Each, each uh, need filled. So we need to adopt what I call the entrepreneurial paradigm. That's the, that's the beginning of entrepreneurship. Have a mindset that is hardly satisfied with status quo. A mindset that is constantly questioning and asking, what do we do to better what we are doing? How can we make our business bigger? How can we make it more profitable? How can we satisfy more of customers? How can we reach uh, people with greater speed? How can we serve them uh, more uh, less, less costly? How can we trill them? How can we recruit more customers? Uh, many, cost, many pharmacies uh, do business without understanding the fundamental. The fundamental of business is customer creation. 
you have to create customers. And I know that some of our, uh, even community pharmacists, if I ask them, give me your customer list, they're looking at me. You know, you have to, anybody that walks into your pharmacy becomes your customer. You need to register him as a, as a customer and begin to cultivate him. And the more you have more people coming to your pharmacy regularly, the bigger your business. One day you find that you need more money to expand. You need that that place is no longer big. You know, so fundamentals of business, I think, are the things we are going to learn today. Um, luckily, uh, I hope he hasn't spoken. Mr. Sony uh, will be talking about the fundamentals of how to begin business. And I don't want to take his place, but I believe that every business must start with a business concept. You must have an idea what you want to do. And then when you have that idea, let's say you want to open a pharmacy, then that is fine. It's a business idea. But why would you open the pharmacy? Where? Is there a feasibility? Is there a market space? Is there a demand you want to fill? Is there a niche that other people are not filling? Because if you just enter, open pharmacy where everybody's opening pharmacy, you will not make it. You know, except you differentiate yourself and determine there's something you're going to give them that you do, they don't have. And that will come from first doing what we call market research. You have to, you have to research the market to look for where the gaps are, to look at what I call the satisfaction quotient or the or satisfaction gradient. You need to look for those to determine where you're coming and what, uh, uh, what, what opportunity you're going to create. You need to determine a vision. Where am I going with this business? And it's better you determine it at the first because the foundations you're going to build will depend on how far you want to go. All of us who have built houses know that if you don't, know how many floors you are going to build, then the foundation may not be right. And that what causes buildings to fall. When people begin to find that they have built a foundation for a two-story building and they now have ambition for five. So you must build a foundation based on your vision. You must do a proper planning of what you want to do. Planning, which is called business plan. If I ask many pharmacists, what is their business plan? Many of them don't have a real business plan. Those that have written business plan may have written it just to satisfy maybe a bank. They want to go to borrow money, but they are not working with the business plan because they didn't think it through. And people make plans and throw them away and begin to work offhand. It's like a, a, a flight, a, a, a captain of an aircraft drawing up his um, flight plan, submits it to NCA, and then at the end of the day, just enters the plane and begins to fly by his thoughts without looking at his uh, flight plan. You know the end of that plane and the and, and the pilot. So we must a plan well researched and which we can follow. Then we must go on to resource aggregation. Make sure we have the right resources, the right human resources, the right capital, the right uh, material uh, resources. Do not start a business if you don't have the minimum to make it take off. So they are not like an aeroplane which drives on the tarmac, does not have enough trust to take off. It just blocks the, uh, uh, it blocks the tarmac. It cannot fly. Other planes cannot land. So you must be sure you, you look for human uh, resource, cap, uh, uh, material resources, and the uh, capital in terms of money. And there are options. I'm sure during this session, you learn how to raise funds for your different categories and different stages of your business. Because cash is like the, the, the blood of a business. And, and as a child grows, he will need more blood. Uh, more food. So also a business will need more cash to continue to grow and to remain alive. Then you do implementation. You must implement because most of us can make plans. Implementation is where we fail and also do post uh, final opportunity to review it. As I begin to close this short opening uh, comments and goodwill, I, I like to say that uh, there are four things Everybody who wants to be an entrepreneur must have beyond the beyond the issue I spoke about the entrepreneur paradigm. We must also summarize it in four in four, four P's, and these four P's are purpose, plan, passion, and providence. Purpose, plan, passion, and providence. I've spoken about purpose and plan. Passion is what keeps you going. And that also relates to the value that drives your business. 
Passion is what you need when the road becomes a little bit rough, when you begin to face the challenges of the business. Providence is what you need when you have done your best. You don't know what else to do. Then God comes in. What I call the God factor. That's the, that's the providence factor. Many businesses have run into trouble, and that's because they, didn't, they, they trusted just on their own power. They hoped they had all the answer to every question. But in my life, I found that at junctions where I didn't know where to go, I went to God and he showed me the way, and I found his way was superior even to the way I wanted to go. So these days, I do not wait till I get to the junction or to the point where there's difficulty. I start with him up front. I consult him, and together we work. And I found that in those circumstances where I have been humble to go to him, to lead me every part of the way, from business conception to planning to resource aggregation to implementation, he has led me successfully. So today, I want to recommend all this to you as you go through this series of uh, teachings and learning. And my hope is that at the end of the day, uh, what we measure is not effort, but result. That result will be that our businesses have taken a new turn. We're expanding our businesses. We are growing our branches. We are growing our turnover. We are growing our product offering. We are growing our market shares. Those things will define whether this series has been beneficial or not. I am waiting to hear the results and to see us blossom and soar after this series of programs. Once again, thank you for coming. Thank you for investing your time in what I think is profitable. And uh, Jibade, God bless you. Thank you. Something not in malaria comes here. Something in the finish malaria. Bata, bata. Guys, I don't be good. My wife needs to wear. Job shooter. Don't struggle again, Abi. Oh boy, no be that one. She do test, then send a malaria. True? Malaria see that this double now. If you like, say I never hear you about my short at the party. Which best friend you get? Where we know Sabi? Name now Zoxin. I need to know more about this your best friend. Ah, no, Wahala. Zoxin, the better anti-malaria medicine. We get a better combination of fatemeter plus lumefantrin. Now confirm anti-malaria medicine. I never see any friend with better pass my Zoxin. No. Hi, oh boy, you know all these things. Can you know one tell us things? No, Wahala. Now, when I know it, where I run go buy up for my wife, oh. Got it, guy. The Bond Chemical Industries Limited, where they make it bona bit. Power picking them, they make it Zoxin. In anti malaria medicine, he day for pharmacy with the area. If your body not ranga after three days, make you run go see your duck in tar. Cardiovascular health. We want first of all, let's look at the uh, profile of Nemer Pharmaceutical. Nemer Pharmaceutical Limited is an indigenous company of Nigeria, incorporated in Nogos head office in Enugu, that into manufacturing and distributing the product they make in the country. They manufacture all their products and they are, they are involved in research and development. We have a staff, staff strength of about 160 employees. So Neme Pharmaceutical is a, an indigenous company that has done a lot. As I'm telling you, we are the company, I can say Neme Pharmaceutical is the only company that is making coal amongst the cloud in the country, not important. So we have a standard manufacturing plant here in Enugu. And our objective is to reduce mortality and mobility via production of cost-effective pharmaceutical products, driven by cut age research and the technology we have in our office. Recently, we introduced some, cardio, some anti hypertensive products, um, products. So that will take us to look at some type of cardiovascular diseases. We know there are various type of cardiovascular diseases. And we all you know that that 1% of global deaths are attributed to cardiovascular diseases or raised blood pressure. And um, we all agree with me that one of the major prevailing factors, I mean, pre uh, one of the major factors leading to cardiovascular ailment is uh, hypertension. Hypertension is a big factor whenever I want to talk about cardiovascular, whenever I want to talk about cardiovascular diseases. And prevalence of hypertension is high. You can see what I'm showing you as prevalence of hypertension. And for me not to waste more time here, I will simply put it that hypertension is so common that hypertension half about, about half of adult population, adult urban population in the country are hypertensive. And there's high mortality and mobility late. And we have low renin physiology 
increased cardiovascular complication due to uncontrolled hypertension, leading to stroke and other cardiovascular diseases. And we also know that high cost of management and compliance is major, they are one of the major challenges. And when we look at management of hypertension, we find out that definition of hypertension 60 years above, when your systolic blood pressure is and diastolic is greater than 150 over 90. And when you are less than 60 years, we use 140 over 90. And GCH recommends thyroid diuretic, calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, and ARB. And then um, we also look at uh, individualization of therapy. Most of these drugs we have in the country, due to the fact they are imported, are very expensive. And we know they are combination therapy. The cost of management is high, and the patients, when they don't afford their drug, they, their problem is actually compounded. There are studies we did to show that combination of this drug and giving it at a low cost will help Nigerians to manage their patients. So when you, have, you, are, you, are, when you subscribe to the mere adiovascular drug, you get this drug at a very good price. We have Temisartan plus Crotalidone and Amelodipine combined in one tablet, and we call it Tensevin. So Temisartan is an angiotensin receptor blocker. Crotalidone is a thiazide type diuretic, and Amelodipine is calcium channel blocker. We have Cotripin, which is Temisartan and Amelodipine. And we have Mediran, which is Crotalidone and Amelodipine. Then we have Cypress, which is Crotalidone alone. And we have Nemeprin, which is a low dose uh, aspirin. So you can look at this drug. We consider before we move into Crotalidone, Temisartan, and Amelodipine combination. We look at, we look at the onset of action, their peak effect, the absorption, the pharmacokinetic, they are very, very, very friendly. And then um, the, one of the major drugs we also introduce as a single product, which is a thousand type diuretic, is Cypress. Cypress is a brand of Clotaridone. You agree with me that Clotaridone is not a new molecule. It's a very old molecule, but we are making Clotaridone available in the country now. Where your patient is not doing well in any of the diuretic hydrocotaza and other diuretic you have around, and you think of an old taza like diuretic that has been available for a very long time, we are making it available now. It was available and you left the country for one reason or the other. But now, the Mercomastico is giving you Clotaridone that is locally man manufactured, and our brand name is Cypress. Cypress 12.5 milligrams. So we know the role of diuretic in management of hypertension in black. If you have need to add thiazide-like diuretic to any of the drug your patient is taking, you think of side press and you have it locally available and you have it at a very good price. Colotaridone is a sonomal variability and has similar like uh, thiazide. That is why you call thiazide-like diuretic. If you compare Colotaridone and the popular hydro Crotalidone, both of them are old drug, but studies show that Crotalidone is more potent than hydrocrotalidone in lowering blood pressure. And several studies have shown that Crotalidone at same dose is 1.5 to 2 times as potent as a hydrocrotalidone. If you can go on, you can Google and find a lot of compare hydrocrotalidone and Crotalidone, and you'll find the reason why you should go back and give your patient Crotalidone. But what the male is giving you is a uh, at a, a very good price, locally made, and it's available in all parts of the country. They all have studied the most that Crotalidone, Cypress, has statistically significant lower incidence of stroke and heart failure when compared to the Sinopril and Meliodipine, and those are the same. There are also strong evidence for meta analysis that it reduces the risk of myocardial infarction. Cardiovascular or cost mortality in patients with uh, hypertension. So when you want to give your patient a thyroid like diuretic and when you think cotaridum, it's an old molecule. You can go you can see all the benefits it has. What I'm showing now is some of the side effects you have. So when you are thinking about cotaridum, know that cotaridum is available. I know we have a lot of pharmacies connected here. 
Ask for Kotale done and it will be given to you at a very good price. These are some of the uh, side effects that I've actually shown. But let's look at the management of hypertension, why we have a lot of combination therapy. We found out that in proper management of hypertension, about 25% of our patients we need monotherapy. 50% we need dual therapy. And about 25% we need three or more combination for them to the DP to be effectively controlled. So we find out that about 75% of your patients we need one, two, or three drugs for their BP to be effectively controlled. And when you look at it, cost will come in and compliance will come in. That is why in the mail, we move into combination therapy in field dose to get our BP lowered. We said that I recommend initiating therapy with two drugs in patients with systolic blood pressure, 20 millimeter mercury and diastolic pressure, 10 millimeter mercury above the go blood pressure. So once you have your systolic like above um, 160, you are thinking of two drugs. When you have your diastolic up to 100, you are thinking about two drugs. And therapy with single blood pressure medic medication fail in more than 75% of patients. That is why we move into a lot of combination. And I use this opportunity to introduce a lot of combination and combining high blood pressure medication at lower doses also have significant reduction in the side effect and as well compliance and when get it in good price of course we play a major role a major role so Lemel is introducing cotripin cotripin is a combination of amlodipin and temisartan amlodipin is a calcium channel blocker and temisartan is an angiotensin re receptor blocker Temisartan plus amlodipine provide effective BP lowering at all clinical relevant doses, up to 26.5 millimeter mercury systolic. And nine out of 10 patients might will achieve diastolic blood pressure control. So you can, when you want to call, think of a single pill that is giving amlodipine and temisartan, which is a calcium channel blocker and the angiotensin receptor blocker, you take of cotripine. And above all, cotripine is very cost-effective and it's manufactured uh, locally. Tell me, Satan, I talk about, I, you can get more information because of time. Let's now move in talking about the advantages of uh, advantages of uh, angiotensin receptor blocker. But a lot of this shows that an and, and, and angiotensin report uh, receptor blocker is very well tolerated. Amlodipine is a casual channel blocker that has been widely used in Nigeria. So when you want to think of combining amlodipine and uh, temisartan, casual channel blocker and angiotensin receptor blocker in a single tablet, to take about cotripine, and it's available in the country. Made the RAM, where your patient, you need to combine temisartan, which is angiotensin receptor blocker, combined with the clotaridone, which we also have as a single drug. You think of Medran. Medran is also manufactured in Nigeria by Nemel. In Enugu here, we add their value and we have the Mesatan and Kotaridon in a single pill and very cost uh, effective. I've talked much about Medran and Kotrip, uh, about um, Kotaridon, and also we talk much about the Mesatan. Medran is the product containing. Mesartan and Codaridon, and it's available. And then we have Tensivine. Tensivine is amylodipine, Temisartan, and Codaridon. Amylodipine is not a new molecule as far as North Nigeria is concerned. Temisartan is also an receptor blocker that is a much available, that is available in the country now, and we know we use a lot of angiotensin receptor blocker. And Codaridon is a um, our own uh, Cypress, but we have it here in combination in three intensively. So when you are giving three therapy, three, three molecules working in different mechanisms of action to bring down blood pressure, in, as in one pill, as in one pill, you might go to Tensevin. Tensevin, as I said, is also locally made available. Tensevin is a combination of three medical, medical affirmation. We talk about amylodipine, there's um, the mesartan and um, clotalidol. The triple approach is an opportunity to reflow over traditional approach to care and adopt innovative approach that has been shown to be very, very effective. So when you are giving tensevin, 
you are giving your patient a single molecule, very cost effective, a single pill, sorry, containing three molecules, very cost effective, and the patient will definitely comply, comply because it's a single tablet, very small tablet, taking once daily. So when you want to use Nemer from ranges, you think of very cost effective medication, you think about your customer and patient friendly, um, it's readily available, and all the time delivery above all is proudly Nigeria. And you can see these are uh, contacts. I give the area managers contact. All the area managers have prayer working with them. So when you think of management of hypertension and you think of cost effective management of hypertension using multiple approach, if you have, we, we also have this drug as individual molecule, but you think of the male pharmaceutical, you think of tensibine co tripping made the run, and when you are thinking of a tidal uh, type diuretic that will be used to combine with any other. Drug. Stop trans, med. Bacteria, viruses, and toxins attack the digestive mucosa. This aggression leads to diarrhea and dehydration. Stop Transmed absorbs and entraps bacteria, viruses, and toxins, favoring their elimination. The advantages of using Stop Transmed in the treatment of diarrhea in children and adults. Stop Transmed Mechanical Mechanism of Action No biochemical, immunologic or metabolic mechanism of action. Act strictly locally at the level of digestive tract. Non-absorbable ingredients, non-irritant, does not develop tolerance, no addiction. The objective I have set for today's uh, interaction as follows. Uh, we hope at the end of the day, we will learn how to plan, start and build a successful business. Uh, second, how to improve the chances of your business being successful. Third, how to make sure your business is sustainable. Um, I'd like to start by looking at what is business. Uh, I think we've had several masses already giving, you know, excerpt and some uh, explanation around this. But the simplest way to put it is you must have something of value that is fulfilling a pain, uh, meeting some gaps, meeting a need. Uh, so it's either your service or your product, which you want to trade in in exchange for um, uh, an effort that you put into it and to make profit. And you have different examples of, um, you know, businesses you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, pursue in the pharmacy's realm. Uh, we have our colleagues, some are into retail pharmacy, uh, some are into wholesale, some are into distribution, some are into importation, some are into manufacturing. All these are business uh, entity business concerns, which we can readily uh, pursue uh, depending on where our interest lies. But then in business, it's like a sport. It's very competitive. It's like a war. It's like a sport. You have to have the, the spirit uh, of sportsmanship and the spirit to compete fiercely, uh, but with uh, good ethics in doing that. So if you go by the word of uh, Andre Maoros, he said business is a combination of uh, war and sport. That is the way you should view it. Also, in the words of uh, Stuart Chase, he said, the best mental effort in the game of business is concentrated on the major problem of securing the consumer's dollar before the other fellow gets it. So uh, in any business we are going into, it's good to understand that it must be consumer-centric. You must uh, all, everything you want to do must be around how to solve the consumer's problem. And now the consumer can patronize you and you can earn that income, patronage from that consumer before a uh, competition uh, gets the consumer's attention. And uh, if you go by the words of uh, Charles M. Schwab, he said, a man to carry on a business must have imagination. 
You must change, see things in a vision, a dream of the whole thing. Uh, as the owner of the business, you are the visionary. You must, you must have a vision. You must, you know, be able to um, have an idea where the business starts and where it's likely to, to end. You must have a big dream about that business, you know, you know, some kind of imagination about the business, so to put it. But why do we start business? Um, quite a number of people have different reasons why they venture into business. Some people, they have that innate, you know, uh, ability. They will say it's in the blood. It's in the blood of, of learned how to sell and make things make you know make business you know it's in the blood uh for some is you quit paid employment like myself i worked my entire career you know in the private sector and uh, after i quit the job i felt it's an opportunity to start something that appeals to my passion pursue some other interest it could be that uh, you want you just quit a job that you hate taking so much of your time or, you know, it's not giving you the kind of fulfillment that you desire. And for some, it's freedom. He doesn't want the 24 seven, um, doesn't want, uh, or he or she doesn't want um, uh, seven days, 24 seven work, nine to 5 p.m. work on daily. He wants the freedom. He wants to work anywhere. Uh, he likes the freedom. For some others is to find uh, some work with other people with similar interests. So it's not only about you. It may, it may be that the, 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 the idea that you have in mind, you need to collaborate with other people to actualize. Uh, for some, is to create a product or service that you know is needed. Um, some other is to take ownership of their career, uh, feed their family. Okay, some is an inspiration. God spoke to them, or they got an idea somewhere, and they feel oh, I got to see this through. Uh, for some, is to create jobs, create employment opportunity, take people off the streets, uh, see how they empower them through uh, some kind of vocations. Uh, for some, is to pursue a passion. Be very passionate about some things and you think the only way it can happen is to actually actualize it and set up a business. For some, is to create a, leg a legacy. Uh, once a business that outlive, a business that redefine a particular industry, so to put it. So there are different reasons, and we must do so so searching to determine why why am I going into the business? I think this is very important for us to address within ourselves. Uh, however, we see increasingly that uh, there is a bit of. Uh, a paradox in terms of professionals venturing into business. Um, you all agree with me that in the pharmacy school, it's all about very rigorous uh, training about pharmacology, pharmacognosy, uh, pharmaceutics, and, and the rest. You know, you know, although we do have pharmacy admin, but it's very rigorous training uh, with little attention or exposure to how to run a business. Uh, everything is about, you know, medicines, about, you know, how to make products, how to formulate products and what have you. And, you know, it, 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 it puts we, the professionals, in a very precarious situation where we have little training or experience in the business of running a business. And suddenly we find ourselves to run a business. Uh, I won't know uh, requisite uh, skills or experience or expertise, but we believe it's our profession and we should just be able to run it. Uh, I think uh, um, it, it, it's made a lot of businesses to struggle because of that lack of uh, uh, experience and skills that is required. So uh, business training uh, has not been included in most of our curriculum. And it's a big gap, uh, and we soon face that once we come into practice and we have to do business. And we must figure out how to, how to fill these gaps. So next, I would like to share with you, with all of us, um, what, what are the key lessons? I want to start from the, from the conclusion to the um, 
uh, at, the, at the onset. What are the key lessons for entrepreneurs? If you decided you want to start your own business, that means you want to become an entrepreneur. And uh, you must bear some, some key lessons in mind. Uh, I'll speak to them later, but it's good to put them up front. The first is you must know that uh, businesses that last, that survive, are the ones that pay attention to satisfying, providing values to co customers and respecting their employees. You must have value. Everything you are doing must be about value creation. To what extent are you solving the problems of the consumers? And for your employees, what respect do you have to them? And a part of that is about your ethics. That's the way you conduct your business. Uh, you hear some companies have built reputation over time. They say, ah, that business, they don't give bribe. They don't do this. They don't do that because they, they live by the ethics. They have, you know, very strict ethics about what they do. You can equally build an organization to become that once you define you that. And that's the only way. is a is, 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 is assurance for a long time uh, for your business to survive. Yes, it's good to have passion. It's good to be persistent. But that is not enough to make a business to succeed. Um, the, this, the third one is, if you fail to plan, plan to fail. It shows basically that you need to plan. But planning is not the only thing. Execution is the ha-ha there. Uh, you can have a beautiful plan. If you're unable to follow through execution, it amounts to nothing. So bear that in mind. Uh, strategy is focus. When you need focus, uh, you cannot, it cannot be everywhere. You cannot please everybody. You must define where you want to play. Where is your focus? You can't do everything at the same time because you spread yourself thin, you spread your resources thin, and at the end of the day, you become very, um, you're unable to have a skill you're unable to maximize opportunities uh, because you have spread yourself too thin. The next one is you need to consider to focus on long-term building, not short-term gains. Um, short-term gains is about what profit have we made today, how are we doing today. Long-term is where will this company be in five, ten years' time and all that. So, you need to know that yeah, as an entrepreneur, you need to bear that in mind. So next is a great name. You must, um, you must craft or coin a very good name for your company. Uh, very important to have that. Uh, a great name speaks to how people relate, how they can remember, there are various checklists for how you can coin a great name and how you can test if the name can be, you know, uh, how it's received by those who are supposed to patronize you. Can they pronounce it? Does it have any negative connection? There are different ways you can test your name. You must be financially literate. So we go to pharmacy school with little or no knowledge about, uh, um, you know, uh, any financials. As you come into business, you must understand some little things about, um, about um, you know, financials. What is financial statement? What are budgets and all the rest? If you haven't gotten that skill, even if you are going to outsource, you must have a, a kind of rudimental uh, knowledge about that. And you can do this by attending some courses and reading up some stuff and all that. You don't need to be an expert. You are not an accountant or a financial expert but you must be literate enough to understand and interpret uh, certain aspects of financial statements. We are in the IT era, technology era. You must build a great website for your company. These are key lessons. Uh, you must market your business, become the chief sales officer of your company. Um, the other point is consider outsourcing some functions. When you start, you cannot, um, resource, everything internally. There are certain aspects that you may need to give to top parties uh, to be more efficient. Concentrate on your core area of expertise. 
And some other areas you, you, you may need to outsource uh, to other, you know, reduce no, overhead. Yeah, yeah, uh, focus on building your company equity and image. Uh, you see, uh, there's something they call goodwill yeah, for companies. Uh, if you focus ab initial on building your company equity or image, it helps in long term uh, as per sustainability of your business. Invest in developing your people, invest in retaining your key talents. Uh, I think these are key lessons for entrepreneurs starting a business. I will say this. I would like to go straight away to look at, uh, you know, starting a business. What should be, how do we start a business? How do we, what are the considerations when we're starting a business? Uh, if you are a new starter, I think it, uh, it, you know, it's always good to start to ask the question, why? Why? Why am I launching this business? Yeah? And you must be able to differentiate between uh, that business that serves your personal why or a marketplace why. Uh, there are reasons to say this. A, your personal why is what you like, what you think can work. A marketplace why is what the market wants. What is their desire? Those people that are targeting to patronize you, what is their desire? What is their needs, their wants? That you feel you have a solution to uh to solve not necessarily what you think yeah you know solve your own problem and at the same time you feel all other people will like it so if you go in the words of uh, you know glenn uh, gotek the ceo of, of awaken awake consulting and coaching he says it is good to know why you are launching your business in this process it may be wise to differentiate between whether the business serves a personal why or a marketplace why. When your why is focused on meeting a need in the marketplace, the scope of your business will always be larger than a business that is designed to serve a personal need. Uh, as alluded to earlier, you always have to be customer centric, marketplace centric. Um, you, you just have to focus on the gap, the needs in the marketplace that you really want to, uh, you feel you have a solution to to uh, remedy or to, to fulfill. But then you need to do a personal assessment. Uh, this is the way to start. You have to do a personal assessment. Do an appraisal of yourself. Um, there's something they call the SWOT. That is strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. And within this, you'll be able to address a lot of questions. Why do I want to start this mess? Is it for money, freedom, flexibility? to solve a problem or some other reasons. What are the skills that I have that will be relevant to the uh, business? What are the skills required for the business that I possibly do not have? And how can I get acquire those skills? Do I want to provide a, a service or do I want to introduce a product? Uh, or what exactly do, do I like to do? Uh, you need to look at how much capital do you have to risk because most businesses are actually, um, it's, a, it's a lot of risk to go in there, but uh, the, the return space when the business works. So uh, it's good to conduct a SWOT to figure out all this and be able to, you know, identify uh, some important trends in the in the in the points you are put together in terms of your strengths where your gap lies in terms of the weaknesses you have uh, in terms of uh, you know the weaknesses even of your the business you want to go into what are the opportunities how there that you feel can capitalize on and what are the threats that how there it's good to do that kind of self appraisal uh, or yourself at the external uh, environment and have that in clear uh, perspective so the next one is uh, your research to analyze your area of interest. If you go by the word of um, Tim Berry, the more you know about your area of interest or industry, the more advantage and protection you will have. Uh, doing this, we, 
enable you uh, not to make uh, mistakes that some other people have made. It places you in a better advantage to understand your consumers better, understand the marketplace better. And it's always good that you research this. And the, the number of ways this can be done, you know, uh, you go on Google, you can search, how is this business done? How is it, you know, which companies doing this has been successful? What is the latest trend? Google is a very powerful search uh, engine. And you, you probably have some, of, some other, uh, you know, areas where you can search, search engines where you can get information. But it's always good to do your DEX research to validate a number of things about your area of interest. Uh, you need to speak to people already working there, you know, uh, go in what we call Gemba, go out there, meet with them, you know, um, ask them, how is this business being done? What are the challenges they are facing? How are they this and that? You need to have all that. And the key people that are in your area, you need to uh, recite them at, uh, as well. Um, you can equally get information from relevant news, you know, industry journals, relevant uh, publications and articles that have been written, and they, you need to get information about that. You need to research who are the top players, who are the key top players in this your area of interest. If you are going to retail, you will say, oh, who are the top tier players in retail? Yeah, how are they doing this retail business? How are they doing it? Are there consumer dissatisfaction in the way the current uh, players are doing it? Why are they successful? Why are the current players successful? Are there gaps in what they currently do that you think you can have um, a compelling solution to, to, to provide, which gives you an edge when you come into that? Uh, so you need to do all those search. Um, you need to decide on the appropriate business model. Uh, the business model, when you read business model, it's, uh, these days, let me take the, 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 the retail pharmacy, for instance. You can say, oh, one is for you to open your own franchise, that is uh, Lacon Pharmacy or Lakeside Pharmacy. Or I can say, oh, I'm, I'm not well known, I'm not ready to, you know, uh, risk starting my own franchise. I'm not well known, it takes a long time. Maybe there are more established pharmacy, uh, retail pharmacy, they are willing to run franchise. Can I take franchise of uh, Health Plus or Med Plus or Net Pharmacy or all this? Can I come under them and learn and grow quickly? You know, come under, you know, uh, their best practices and their image and do that. So it's for you to, to, to decide. All this information are very important for you to know. Uh, because they help a long way. They're part of the initial things that you need to know, and they're going to feed it into your planning. I will come into that later. Uh, another thing that I would recommend, and which I've seen that as well, is to shadow or do a, a bit of apprenticeship. Uh, shadow means you just go in uh, to observe what is being done, uh, look at the interaction, look at the way the particular uh, business is being run, uh, so that you have a first-hand um, hands-on experience about the uh, customer you know, experience uh, when it comes to that business. Or you can do apprentice. apprentice. I think the, the people from the East are very good at this, to go and serve under a particular person. Uh, I think this is very useful. Sometimes we take it for granted.